Hey 411, it's Kelly, Saad, and HK. We spent the last week in the lab with Yao Lin examining biofouling, the deposition of bacteria cells on membranes. Just a little background about membrane filtration, it's a relatively new technology where water flows through an engineered membrane barrier that rejects contaminants based on pore size and electrical charge. There are two physical processes that can occur, forward and reverse osmosis, basically flowing with or against the gradient. Membrane filtration, and forward osmosis in particular, have numerous applications in the field of water treatment through the removal of ions and large molecules. In addition, it is possible to generate power using forward osmosis due to the creation of a pressure grate. The process biofouling is one major limitation to long-term use and it can greatly reduce the filtration ability of the membrane. Biofouling leads to additional costs required to clean the membrane or replace it. Studying the process of biofouling is essential to develop ways to mitigate its effects on the filtration process. Through the information collected in this experiment, we can better understand how biofouling occurs. We started the experiment by preparing agar, LB broth, and antimicrobial kenomycin solution. We autoclaved everything, allowed the solutions to cool, and poured the agar into plates before inoculating them with bacteria and placing them in a heated chamber to grow. After 18 hours, the plates were moved to the refrigerator for the weekend. Next, we moved the bacteria from plates to broth. We allowed the bacteria to grow for six hours in a water bath. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Yay, we're ready to take it out. After six hours, we used a centrifuge to systematically replace the LB broth with 154 millimolar sodium chloride solution to make the bacteria more visible. Meanwhile, we also prepared four molar for the draw solution and 100 millimolar for the feed solution. Once the LB broth was replaced, we determined the amount of bacteria in the solution under a microscope using image analysis. Finally, the experiment can actually begin. We put the new membrane, feed, and draw solutions in the apparatus and turned on the pumps. Then, we captured one image with the microscope every minute for 45 minutes and then every five minutes until we reached one hour. The first phase of the experiment is marked by a linear cell accumulation rate. This was because there was no interference with the attraction forces between the membrane and bacteria. We can see that after 15 minutes, the rate of accumulation slows down and the curve stabilizes. This reveals how increased biofouling causes a reduction in membrane flux. In addition, biofouling also inhibits the membrane's ability to capture bacteria due to accumulated cells repelling other cells of similar electrical charge. Accounting for error, the accumulation of bacteria layers and inability of the camera to focus on all of those layers produce erratic cell counts. In addition, cells clumping into larger masses could not be properly counted by the image processor. By examining the trend of the cell density curve, it is clear that there are two distinct phases during the experiment. The characteristics of the solution and membrane can play an important role in the biofouling process. For example, it is known that bacteria cells are negatively charged at neutral pH, and so adjusting the pH of the solution, thereby changing bacteria's surface charge, may affect the rate of cells adhering to the membrane. Future experimenting with variations in the concentration, type of bacteria, temperature, and pH of the solution could reveal the effect of these parameters on biofouling. This data could help improve understanding of biofouling mechanisms and help develop fouling control strategies.